done some of my management techniques and stuff off of what he does with his band and I would say all in all it was an experience that I don't think I would be able to trade for anything else like it really has been quite a precious experience working with him and learning and seeing the way that he operates and stuff even with, even with all the challenges that, that goes with it and that's a, you are a politician <laughs> Oh my god. No, that I was well. So. When are you going to be running for office? <laughs> I don't think I'll ever be running. But I'm being real. I mean, that is just really no, my I'm an optimist. I try to see the good things in, in everything that, that we do. And for me, this experience has really been a positive one. All right. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> well, let me switch a little bit. What type of music are you generally listening to? Uh, to get inspiration for your different um, choreograph moves and, and, and um, you know it's weird I listen to all types of music I'll give you an example of I think what was probably the most interesting choreographic means that I used was um, at the time we, we were it was running late into we were probably late November early December and this carnival season was very much upon us and we hadn't heard any of his re- new releases as yet and we didn't want to wait until it was too late to then try to put together all these new routines and stuff and i remember going by Selima. it was late one night probably like one one in the morning next to two in the morning and i was like you know z let's just start working on moves and working on sequences and then we adapted to the music after so we used she just started bringing music out we used a jazz piece I really can't remember the name of it. I think it was Ray Holman. I could be misquoting him. But it was a very slow jazz music. And we started doing movements and choreography to that piece. And eventually we adapted that piece to a song he had with Umi Makano called Block to Block. And I, I mean, people say that that was probably one of my best piece of, pieces of choreography. And it was not done to the original music. Oh, wow. Yeah. So mixing the do you find that you're also mixing a lot of maybe compa or some you know music from across the caribbean not just soca or dancehall but are you finding that you're mixing a variety of different sounds is it techno because i hear some of the stuff that's called island pop now Mm -hmm. coming from soca artists like destra garcia um madman production just did a a couple tracks yeah i think it's excellent he's always been trying to you know change his music is really about crossing over into the international market and the mainstream media and so you tend to find that these days generally and i really like that song like you know songs like aoa is probably one of my favorites and it, it really is like a different vibe and a different energy from what you would have seen just from some of the more traditional zookas you, you talked a little bit about your dance classes mm-hmm. uh, are you going to be offering anything in nyc soon um, most definitely, I'm working towards starting next year. I, I, a lot of people, you wouldn't believe, would send me emails and stuff, and they would be like, LaShawn, when are you going to come up to New York? I've been experimenting with starting with soca classes. So it's not something that you would see in the mainstream types of dance offers. Um, but it's really something that I feel the Caribbean diaspora, especially in New York, seeing the work that we do at Marsha Montano and even other soca artists, because some of our dancers also perform with Kesti Band and for two years we had some of our dancers with Destro Garcia as well performing and touring with them okay pause for a second <laughs> I I just went to go see Kesti Band that was my that's obvious one of my favorite bands of all time okay those dancers that were with him they're with LMA work with your company well yeah they're with LMA get out <laughs> of here listen I was up front the whole night dancing and enjoy myself and those girls were for not they were yeah. very very good that's fascinating i did not know that yeah actually um and it's weird because two of the dancers right now migrated um mandisa foster who is also the official graphic artist of the company she does all our graphic work she migrated to miami and she's doing graphic arts um right now and another one of the dancers that you would see with him kathleen bailey um she migrated to london but they all perform with they are going to be coming back together and performing with him in Miami. So even though they're located at different countries, we still consider them to be full fledged uh, members. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, that is excellent. I'm, 
I am sitting here. One of the best concert I've seen in a long time was Kess the Band in Queens at Mocha. Right. Mocha Nightclub, I believe it was. Yeah. And I, I had a blast. <laughs> enjoyed myself. I and enjoyed it. You know, one thing I have to say is that the dancers, I think, add, the choreography adds so much to a show. Oh, definitely. T- tell us a little bit about your perspective in terms of, yes, it's good to have a nice tune out there. But as a man like me, you know, one of the things we're looking at is the female dancers. And if they're moving and they're moving nice and the vibes is nice, it's going to add a whole lot to the show. Tell us a little bit about your intention behind well, creating that type of atmosphere. The thing is, you see that in any any international act, and you see there, it's a presentation, really. It's, I mean, music is one thing, and I guess if you're listening to it on a CD or on the radio, it's really just the audio aspect. But when you go to a live performance, it's more encapsulating if you have a visual addition to the presentation. So that is what our dancing is really about. I mean, and I have learned a lot during my tenure with with the HD band. Um, I remember when I started, you know, I would do stuff. I had to understand the difference between choreographing for live performances, such as the ones that he would do on stage, and choreographing, say, for example, like a theatrical type production. And when I started, I would do, you know, a lot of intricate moves and stuff, and he would be like, Sean, who is all of that? Like, make it simple, we are both hyping the crowd, you know? And it's <laughs> is that your best mashup? <laughs> I'm sure there are other people who can impersonate him much better than I can. But oh. um, but the presentation is really about engaging the crowd and about, you know, it's about the energy and transmitting that energy that is within the music into the crowd and into the atmosphere. And I think that is really, really what makes the performances a lot more enjoyable. Caribbean Lifestyle Media. Your online source for the latest music, videos, in-depth interviews, and stories about your favorite Caribbean artists you'll never get anywhere else. Check us out on the web at the following websites, danceolsoca.com, idanceolreggae.com, dsoca.com. They make the music, we tell you the stories. Welcome to your destination.